Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Indus International Research Foundation, I welcome you all to the IIRF Aerospace and Defense Technology Weekly Lecture Series. For your kind information, these lectures are specially designed for our audience from the defense industries, MSMEs, startups, and the defense scientist community. Today is the third lecture in the series. We have already shared the recording of our earlier two lectures with you, and you can also access them on our website. Today's talk is on the doctrinal shift in the warfare due to the extensive usage of drones in the armed forces. Our honored guest speaker today is Air Marshal VPS Rana, and today's talk will be chaired by Lieutenant General C.A. Krishnan. However, before we begin, I will request President IIRF Brigadier Sandeep Kumar to give his welcome address and commence the proceeding. Over to you, Brigadier Sandeep Kumar, sir. Can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, on behalf of the Indus International Research Foundation, let me welcome all the all our esteemed guests who spared their valuable time to attend the third in the series of talks on Atma Narbar Bharat in aerospace and defense industry. It gives me immense pleasure to inform all that the Indus International Research Foundation, in collaboration with, with IAR of Americas, World Trade Center, Utah, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, Utah, United Service Institution of India, St. Joe's, Strive, and the Policy Times have started a lecture series under the banner of Atma Nirbhar Bharat in aerospace industry, the way forward for a strong and resilient India. The broad aim of the series of lecture is to familiarize the private defense industry and entrepreneurs and academia with the broad emerging technology needs of the Indian Armed Forces. User interface with academia and industry will be our future aim. Till date, we had two such online talks as already mentioned by uh, Group Captain Mehta. The first talk was by Lieutenant General Anil Kapoor or ex-DGME on emerging tech landscape for modernization of armed forces, a consortium approach. It was a, uh, uh, a policy-based uh, uh, talk. The second talk was by Colonel Selva Kumar, more grounded. It was on collaborative research and development and coordinated manufacturing. Recordings of these talks are available on our YouTube channel and on our website, indusresearch.in. I would request the August gathering to subscribe to our channel and give your comments. Today we are presenting for you a talk on uh, a talk and presentation on drones in war, a doctrinal shift in warfare, an opportunity for industry by Air Marshal VPS Rana, Param Vishesh Seva Medal, Vishesh Seva Medal. Drone technology in war, you know, it has caused a doctrinal, doctrinal shift. It's an opportunity for defense industry has undoubtedly revolutionized the modern warfare, leading to a significant doctrinal shift. Drones have enabled militaries to conduct precise and targeted strikes against enemy positions, minimizing collateral damage. Drones can remain in the air for an extended period of time, providing real-time intelligence, surveillance, and recce, that is ISR capabilities. This allows military commanders to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the battlefield and make more informed decisions. Drones have also enabled militaries to conduct non-contact non operations at tactical, operational, and strategic domains, reducing the risk of casualties. Therefore, we have to understand that defensive measures against such offenses are equally important in non-contact warfare. Advancement in artificial intelligence and machine learning have enabled drones to operate independently without human intervention for a long period of time. This has led to the development of autonomous drones that can perform a range of tasks from reconnaissance to precision strike. Loitering munitions are going to be the major asset in shaping the battlefield in future wars, being more cost effective than traditional military assets. I also take this time to welcome our senior attendees who have spared their time, the Senjos, the USI, Strive, and not forgetting uh, 31 Armored Dev, GOC, and all officers attending the talk. With this, I hand, over, hand you over to Lieutenant General C.A. Krishnan, our advisor, to start the ball rolling. Thank you, sir. 
good afternoon brigade sandeep uh, good afternoon uh, marshal rana welcome to you and uh, good afternoon everyone uh, i hope i am audible enough uh, sandeep sir. yes yes, yes okay. Sir. okay okay uh, okay uh, you know the topic for uh, marshal rana for which uh, topic uh, something on which i think he is uh, most eminently suited to speak to us uh, doctrinal shift in warfare due to employment of drones uh, uh, all that i will do is uh, not to give a, a talk myself uh, try and do anything uh, i will only flag some issues the impact of uh, most of which i'm sure uh, if not all uh, of these issues will be addressed during the talk uh, within the time that uh, we have indicated to him so i will straight away go on to these uh, issues which i would very briefly flag uh, the first uh, issue is whether we really want to go as far as uh, calling it a doctrinal shift i will leave it at that uh, and the thereafter it is the application you know the application of drones across the board uh, from surveillance uh, brigade sandi very briefly touched upon it from surveillance to executing strikes whether they are precision strikes or otherwise logistics communication Cy war, conventional uh, war, hybrid use by terrorists, and also for counterterrorism operations. You know the employment of uh, drones is uh, restricted, I suppose, only by the user's uh, imagination in uh, how to employ it. Uh, it affords immense flexibility. Uh, the variety that we have, uh, starting from a toy. Uh, a drone or a quadcopter something which you can hold in your hand to a, a something which can carry heavy uh, weapons it affords variety endurance survivability deniability affords uh, low cost low risk option uh, it makes things affordable how does it uh, you know how potent an asset uh, it proves to be for non state actors the employment uh, while keeping you know something is it something which uh, uh, while being employed uh, enables you to keep the tempo below the uh, war threshold uh, that is something we need to look at very seriously aramco strike uh, which happened a few years back is a clear example uh, also um, you know marshal can tell us whether how far are we from seeing drone versus drone dog fights will we soon get to see it also about anti drone weapons and countermeasures uh, drones operating combined with um, manned fighters and uh, finally as uh, this uh, lecture is part of or this uh, talk or interaction is part of a series on aerospace and defense tech per se do tell us also about uh, the domestic technology and manufacturing capabilities and the pace at which uh, india seems to be moving into this arena with that that as a huge uh, umbrella over to you uh, a marshal vijay rana thank you so much sir uh, first of all uh, it's really uh, wonderful to be uh, on this platform um, i have a lot of my previous bosses already here my instructors um, air marshal khosla was my instructor in tag d long back uh, Air Commodore Mirani was my instructor in Staff College, and later uh, we also uh, worked together as DS in a Staff College. Uh, Air Marshal Bapat is uh, was AOA when uh, I was uh, with him. Um, so, uh, and uh, I think almost everyone who is uh, here knows as much about the topic as I know. So what I would do is I'll just roll out uh, the topic and uh, probably have more of the discussions later. Uh, the issues that um, Krishna sir brought out are very, very relevant. And those are the answers that we are actually uh, seeking. So uh, this is briefly how, what I will uh, cover, uh, evolution of drones. Uh, very briefly, the history, how have we uh, moved and uh, come so far then uh, how has this asymmetric uh, warfare and imaginative uses has forced us to think whether it is actually going to be a doctrinal shift or is it has it already shifted in in our uh, other age-old uh, doctrines then countering the drone threat 
how the future battle space and uh, is going to be and what is there for the drone industry in that uh, domain and uh, then we will uh, discuss about doctrinal shift like i said uh, whether if at all it is a doctrinal shift we'll discuss that engagement of industry by armed forces of late there has been a lot of engagement that's happening uh, with this industry almost everybody is for sure understand that they, these are here to stay so uh, what is it in it uh, for the industry and how are we moving forward so those are the some issues that i'll discuss just to introduce uh, generally uh, we found um, right from the world war one that the technologies actually were developed for defense and then those technologies were then taken on for the civilian uses uh, whether it was uh, radar, it was radio, it was any other uh, uh, high-tech uh, technology. Uh, first, it was used by the defense forces and then was used by uh, the same. Uh, same. Same was the uh, case with the UAVs as well. Uh, we, we did a start this for the uh, defense uses uh, first and then later. But of late, what has happened uh, as a reversal trend is the commercial UAVs, which otherwise were being used uh, for, you know, petty uh, logistical roles or, uh, you know, the hobbies, those are the drones uh, and UAVs that have found the space in the battlefield. And that is some sort of a kind of a reversal that these uh, machines, the smaller machines, which are primarily for the civilian users, are now actually extensively being used by the military, particularly in uh, Ukraine um, uh, and uh, also now in all other warfares, which I'll cover later. Uh, this recent surge in utilization of drones in war has uh, forced us to think, and then many experts do believe that there has actually been a doctrinal shift in the warfare. Uh, Russian winter offensive, just those of you who are following uh, the drones, uh, just about almost 75. Uh, drone uh, attack was with the Shahed 136 drone uh, just two days back, um, and uh, earlier there was there was a, some lull uh, in utilization of the drones, and it's again now picked up pace uh, like anything. Cheap drones, easy availability, and air power reaching to uh, underprivileged. All those countries and all those elements and all uh, those entities who otherwise uh, could not afford the high cost high technology uh, air platform are actually now uh, are able to utilize the air power in whatever restrictive manner but the fact is that the air power is available to all these uh, people who otherwise couldn't have afford uh, the on you know, the aircraft or the or the high end uh, uavs the modification of the commercial drones, like I've said, they, they literally like flying IEDs. You know, uh, the problems that the ground forces and the security forces faced with IEDs is almost a similar thing as now being faced by the uh, militaries uh, because of the application of these drones in the air. And uh, the asymmetric advantage to the drone uses is uh, that particularly, again, when I'm Talking uh, drones here, I'm specifically talking about the low-tech, uh, low-cost uh, drones. Uh, because uh, high-cost, high-tech drones have always been there. Uh, but the, it is it is these low-tech, uh, low-cost drones that are creating the asymmetric advantage uh, since, you know, I'll, I'll come to that part later, that how, how this is uh, actually uh, getting advantages to the drone users. Difficulty in countering the drones uh, because primarily because the size ranges from miniature to uh, large UAVs and the spectrum is pretty large. I being uh, having spent uh, you know, a lot of my time in air defense uh, domain, I know how difficult uh, it would be for the people who are wanting to engage uh, these drones. The detection is really, really impossible or the smaller the size, uh, the uh, bigger the problem. We'll cover that issue. And uh, last is that the drones are the future, is new industries on the rise, uh, opportunities for technical companies and MSMEs is uh, on the anvil. So these are the issues on which uh, we'll discuss. So let's briefly talk about the evolution of drones uh, in war. 
they have been as old as the warfare actually you know uh, right from the first world war uh, uh, the uavs were used if you see the left uh, that picture okay so the first prototype uh, uav which was primarily for the aerial targets they wanting to do is uh, as big as um, it was a b17 flying fortress airframe base and it was done um, in fact uh, earlier in 1917 and 1918 by uk and us did fly uh, those uh, aerial targets which you see on the right side is a winston churchill actually on a tiger moth i think this was the seaplane uh, uav that was uh, used um, uh, for as as aerial targets then in 1946 uh, by the usa in ba17 flying fortress based airframe the two prototypes were used then uh, which flew almost 2600 miles and they were all uh, radio controlled uh, uavs um, this tiger moth air from based uh, it is a queen bee was the name and probably uh, some attached this name drone probably originated uh, from this time onwards thereafter large scale use was made in vietnam war as decoys uh, for psy ops and also uh, in fact uh, some of the the thing uses was there also for flying firing the missiles so the proper uses of this actually uh, happened in vietnam war and thereafter um, uh, in almost every war we followed uh, the tadrian mastiff was the first battlefield uav with data link and electronics and very very effectively used in 1970 pre arab israel war of course we all have followed extensive uh, you uh, in the gulf war extensive use was uh, made of these uavs and later in afghanistan but these were the ones we are primarily the larger uavs absolutely they were as as expensive as the uh, aircraft and uh, as technologically advanced as uh, some of our aircrafts are so in recent wars uh, how has this shaped the recent wars being used for uh, now uh, they are being used for ground attack they are also being used for artillery direction and uh, also for search and strike and in certain extent also for the close air support so this is the one part that i would discuss that how is it impacting the uh, typical doctrinal beliefs that uh, we have uh, so far had uh, nagorno karabakh war of 2020 between armenia and azerbaijan saw it extensive extensive use of turkish and iranian and russian uh, and chinese uh, uh, drones then russia ukraine war of uh, i'm sure almost everybody is following what has uh, been happening there for almost two years but uh, what came in this war is the the kamikaze role of the drones uh, which was like a loitering musician was always uh, there but here specifically drones were doing uh, these particular uh, hit and strike uh, and search and strike role and that is something very typically which has come out of the russian uh, ukraine war other uses uh, ethiopia government used as against the great people's liberation frontiers rebels libya used it in its brutal civil war against rebels uh, i think somebody made this mention of the hoti uh, rebels uh, that um, uh, famous swarm drone attack on saudi arabia's oil field and it's been continuing there was there was a lull in between uh, there was a ceasefire but very off and on uh, these attacks are uh, being reported and of course recent hamas israel war that is uh, so much of uses is already happening uh, what is uh, now important here is when you see the turkey iran are now the fast emerging uh, um, manufacturers of uh, the uavs besides other well established markets uh, for the european us uh, etc but turkey and iran in recent times has actually come out in a big way you know, as far as the, this uh, drone manufacturing is concerned when i said asymmetric warfare is primarily why it is asymmetric is because uh, you know the uh, somebody mentioned it when introducing the top, uh, topic that it is it is just the imagination uh, that is restricting the uses and people have done all kind of uh, imaginative uses you know wrapping up uh, the uh, small uh, drone with the grenade using it against the tanks 
and uh, you know just carrying on in the front uh, just the kind of fpbs they're getting just launching just seeing what is the what is the enemy line ahead and preparing their warfare accordingly there have been a seek search and a strike on ground troops and uh, tanks in a very very coordinated manner as well as in a absolutely unorganized manner both so that is why the defenses against these is uh, difficult and that is why it is asymmetric uh, because you really uh, can't plan enough against the kind of uses uh, that that have been uh, reported of these drones uh, that uh, troops with the uh, first person view uh, thing like i said they, they could just launch see up to 5 10 miles what is uh, lying ahead and then accordingly uh, do their plan those their safety is uh, already uh, now that's a big big uh, safety factor for these troops who are equipped with uh, these drones artillery direction uh, pairing of uh, sar uavs and himas this is the picture that you see on the left this has been reported and this is something uh, which is really really interesting uh, uh, the, the um, uh, people that uh, how uh, innovative use and how the efficiency of himas actually uh, was reported uh, many fold once the artillery corrections and all these things were actually assisted by um, uh, these drones uh, strategic attacks on airfield we we have seen this attacks on you see on the right side this was a ukrainian mig 29 on ground this is a, this is a shot uh, by apparently uh, by the uav which was uh, taking down this mig 29 which is on the uh, tarmac uh, this is the Ukrainian MiG-29 being, uh, you know, shot. Just the, this shot is just prior to the weapon launch, and uh, this MiG-29 was uh, destroyed on ground. Similarly, there was on Russian side, uh, uh, the Ukrainian had damaged one A-50 uh, Avax aircraft, and you can imagine what's the kind of uh, impact these drone, small drone attacks have made. No, so these are almost like a strategic targets uh, hitting. There's a large number of naval ships that have been uh, disabled by uh, in, in uh, Black Sea fleet by the Ukrainian. And also similarly, the, the, there have been attacks on the powerhouses. There have been attacks on the radars. And that is why the very small uh, uh, equipment, which is actually not costing so much, is doing you uh, many, many uh, times more damage than uh, to the much, much complex and much bigger uh, systems. So that that is what it is uh, making. This is just a typical uh, attack geometry. Uh, this is the medium uh, size uh, TB2 uh, Barakhtar uh, UAB. This is one which has made a lot of uh, uses was made of uh, this by uh, Ukrainians. And this is a typical configuration um, that this is just... Uh, a picture that I wanted to show that there, there is a, it is a control from uh, ground. But these are the medium uh, category uh, UAVs. Uh, but uh, other than that, there are some where the uh, ground control stations uh, may not actually be needed. But anything which are the medium sized and uh, high sized, high altitude, medium altitude UAVs, obviously, then the ground control stations uh, come on the uh, anvil. Now, um, coming to the countering the drone threat and uh, what are the challenges that uh, we uh, face, you know, uh, and again, I'm now talking about specifically about the smaller size drone. This uh, problem of detection actually uh, is there even for the medium size and large size uh, UAVs. Uh, but uh, those uh, we had actually found little uh, some solutions against that. Uh, but uh, the smaller drones, uh, which are now even they are plastic body, they are wooden uh, drones, very, very small RCS and very difficult to uh, detect. Uh, limited reaction time to engage, even if you for some reason with a naked eye or otherwise you have certain systems which are now being developed, you see it, the time reaction time is very, very limited. Uh, then no fit all solution for engagement because like i said the the entire spectrum of uh, uavs could be from the miniature uh, to a large scale uh, high altitude um, uh, uh, you know, long endurance uh, uavs 
so the uh, you will have to actually have solution for uh, all different kind of uavs and a different then the surprise launched uh, in in a battlefield and particularly all these things have actually come from the russian ukraine uh, war those of you who are following you will see that it could actually just pop up from anywhere and it is it was uh, you know literally a nuisance to be able to actually find any um, uh, uh, solution to tackle these uh, drones multi-directional approach obviously it could because but only problem is there they, they are some of them are short range now most of these ranges are also being enhanced uh, and this approach could actually be multi-directional uh, in, in a battlefield again it makes it that much more problematic per unit engagement exponentially expensive this is again as a kind of asymmetry that i was talking about uh, uh, you know, the small uh, UAV, if you are to uh, down it with, uh, say, like uh, surface to air missiles, uh, you know, the, the, the expense to bring down that is exponentially very, very high. You know, the small drone and, and you, you are, uh, you have no choice but to take it down. So uh, that makes it that much more uh, problematic. Uh, and therefore, the specific solutions need to be found uh, specifically for uh, such uh, small size uh, drones. Countering the drone threat, the kind of technology and methodology, there are two types of systems uh, that are this is because there are uh, people, uh, I'm sure the people who are here from the industry, uh, they are they are aware of this. And why I'm trying to bring out all this is that you see the scope of the drone market you know that there is so much uh, that is it is not just the drone the counter drone also there are so many systems so many uh, things that i have to be now actually uh, catered for two types of systems are there one is for monitoring and second one is for the countering the drone monitoring uh, equipment primarily are uh, rf analyzers um, primarily which will which will see that what frequency is being used by these uavs and their controllers then um, you know uh, the it could be the acoustic sensors uh, it based on the the uh, audio uh, frequencies then optical sensors which is based on the high resolution uh, cameras and of course uh, the radar uh, which is like uh, these are the typical um, uh, radar which are meant for uh, detecting drone obviously there has to be adjustments uh, to be made there are a lot of uh, issues uh, related to uh, this a lot of clutter would uh, be around uh, but nevertheless this is uh, one of one of the uh, equipment that is uh, now being used drone countering equipment you have rf jammers uh, having analyzed uh, the rf frequency then you could uh, jam that frequency uh, and uh, therefore, uh, the, the, the uh, communication between the controller and the ground controller and the uh, drone could be affected. Uh, GPS spoofers uh, would uh, can actually uh, guide uh, the drone to some other direction than where it was intended. High power microwave is a recent uh, developments where there's a high power laser, lasers as well as the microwaves are being used to down the drones. Net and net guns are the one where primarily you have uh, the nets being fired to capture the drones and the net guns which are being used to uh, you know, fire those uh, nets, high energy lasers I talked about. Then there is a cyber takeover system. This is again a relatively newer system where uh, having analyzed uh, the details and the uh, you know, signature of the drones, then you could actually uh, take over uh, the system and uh, then guide it to uh, some uh, other uh, place other than where it was intended to uh, go and of course the hard kill remains uh, the um, uh, one of the option there are various methods of a hard kill uh, if you recollect there have been uh, there was one uh, thing reported where uh, one of the russian aircraft uh, dumped fuel over the uav uh, I think or it was uh, MQ-9 series of uh, the thing. Then there are guns that are uh, used to uh, fire at uh, and various other uh, means of hard kill where you actually damaging uh, the drone. 
uh, and uh, the, of course there is an integrated composite uh, system uh, there, there have been some uh, uh, in-house development by Green Robotics, Gentech and so many others I'll cover that uh, later so but uh, at the core of uh, this none of these system by themselves uh, may be able to get you a foolproof solution so you need to have an integrated composite system uh, which also has to have a uh, command and control system uh, integrated. Uh, and uh, since you have varied kind of uh, drones that are being used, various sizes of drones that are being used, and again, I'm coming back to that point, that that forces us to think uh, that uh, since we have to cater for all these threats now in our battle space, so obviously your doctrines also have to be amended to uh, make sure that uh, all these are being catered for. OK, uh, now I'll just uh, give you a brief uh, look into the drones in future uh, battle space. Um, there are various kinds of uh, drones that are now on the anvil. Uh, there are hybrid drones which could operate from land and uh, water and simultaneously, simultaneously undertake operations. Uh, while being uh, you know launched from land recovered on water or vice versa uh, iran is uh, has uh, developed one such system reportedly and have done the trials uh, loitering uh, unmanned munition uh, is been there for quite some time from the 80s harpy and harrow by uh, israel in fact we also use it ab switch blades of us Lancet and uh, KIB of Russia, CS901 of uh, China. So the loitering uh, unmanned munitions have been there for some time, but recently now this is uh, finding more and more focus uh, in, in, in the battlefield and in the future battle space, this positively is going to get, uh, um, you know, going to uh, be a major, major uh, uh, weapon, so to say. A mother drone for uh, swarm attacks, uh, Luna, new generation, uh, German uh, thing. This is the mother drones are uh, basically the drone concept where uh, the mother drone is actually carrying on board quite a few uh, drones, then launches them uh, in the air and therefore extending the range. And the mother drone, which is obviously is little more expensive, little more, uh, little more. Um, high tech and you would not want to have it damaged over the battlefield so you carry uh, the smaller uh, drones which are whether they are meant for the strike purposes or reconnaissance or any other or the logistical purpose and these uh, drones are then uh, launched ahead uh, by the mother drone retrievable drones by uh, mother aircraft this is another uh, very very important mq20 avenger uh, is is uh, has uh, just given um, uh, this uh, demonstration. Uh, what you see the picture on the left below is is a MQ20 uh, Avenger. Uh, it actually can uh, launch and retrieve drones. And again, the advantage is uh, obvious. You can you can launch the smaller uh, drones much ahead, uh, pull back. Uh, the, there's a data link established between um, uh, the uh, drones, launched drones, and the mother uh, drone. And thereafter, once the uh, the mission of the launched drones is uh, achieved, those can be retrieved back and uh, brought back. So uh, these are something very, very uh, interesting. Um, uh, you know, things that we are going to see uh, uses in war. Multi-role uh, combat UAVs, obviously, uh, now now a uh, lot of UAVs have multiple roles. Something similar to like what we used to have the multi-role uh, combat aircraft. Now, similarly, you are having multi-role combat UAVs. The uh, varied kind of uh, you know payload being available uh, on board, and uh, in the simultaneously in the same mission, uh, you could actually be uh, doing reconnaissance, and you could also be doing a search and a strike. Drone versus drone engagement. Krishnan sir uh, talked about this. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, uh, things that's happening in this field. As of now, uh, drone versus drone primarily is where uh, the the drone actually launches the nets, engages, and captures uh, the drones. 
but uh, time is uh, there hasn't been at least i have not come across where the, there have been a drone versus a drone fight uh, but this this remains the future because if you have proven uh, technology of launching missiles from drone um, and suitable sensors to be uh, put on drone uh, i don't see that time very far off when you you could actually uh, do a hard kill from drone uh, drone versus drone engagement uh, then uh, drones for uh, close air support um, is uh, close air support has always been uh, you know a bone of contention between the ground forces and and the air forces because of uh, the the proximity of um, uh, the target and the enemy with our own uh, troops now with the drones uh, being available to you to undertake and uh, counter the enemy threat whether it is to repulse whether it's a mechanical advance or it is a uh, troops or whatever threat that you may have across uh, who are in your uh, direct contact uh, so uh, the drones can actually be a very very uh, good you and in fact in russian ukraine war there are a lot of lot many times these as commissions have taken place where uh, the drones were uh, used uh, in support of the own troops and and clear the pathways and therefore you know um, uh, get get their uh, move forward another one uh, is a very interesting is uh, air sea land collaborative uh, attack uh, there was one uh, this thing done by the turkish uh, demonstration where uh, the albatross s is a surface um, unmanned surface ship uss was guided by the um, another uh, tb2 drone which which provided it uh, the whatever um, inputs that were required so it is it's a collaborative uh, attack by by the air drone and the sea drone and also now the under uh, surface uh, sea drone under surface uh, um, uh, uavs so these are the kind of very very interesting uh, things that are uh, coming up in in the field of uh, drone and they are going to make uh, the contested battle space that much more uh, complicated uh, the two most fascinating uh, ones are of, of course the jet combat uavs like uh, the kislema by uh, turkey what you see is the right is the right side is a uh, kislema is being developed by uh, the uav by the turkey and uh, on the left is uh, the xq58 uh, well wired this is these are also prototypes but these are something that are going to dominate your uh, battle spaces uh, in in future and uh, the most important of this is the man unmanned teaming capabilities uh, which i'll just spend some time this is uh, this is a figurative um, uh, picture this is uh, actually a, a picture by the korean uh, this thing this is this uh, what uh, they have done the trials uh, recently i think is october uh, in one of the defense expo that this is the concept that they have unveiled uh, manned unmanned teaming capability is primarily talking about uh, the teaming between the unmanned fighter and the manned fighter. Uh, what you see on the left is uh, the capability being shown or the concept being shown by, uh, by the Koreans, wherein the manned fighter, you see on the extreme right, is, is linked with the unmanned fighter. And unmanned fighter is linked with three to four uh, adaptable aerial platforms or up for uh, the thing uh, and uh, in double tier system and these all these are um, you know linked with the high speed wideband uh, data link connections so uh, conceptually in uh, the two tiers uh, concept uh, what is uh, going to happen is one fighter aircraft is going to be linked through this high speed data link linked to four unmanned fighters which are equally equally potent uh, fighters and each of these unmanned fighter is then uh, linked with uh, three to four uh, adaptable aerial platforms now these adaptable aerial platforms could be used for variety of roles they could be used for jamming they could be used for reconnaissance uh, they could be used for decoys 
and uh, conceptually uh, how uh, apparently they are going to use it that there is a man fighter which is going to uh, be behind will have uh, these uh, four ahead uh, unmanned fighter and each of these will have ahead of them will have the uh, AP and uh, these are AI enabled teaming of um, you know this is a um, uh, conceptually uh, very very potent uh, the thing and this is uh, uh, when it comes and if it comes out the way it is being conceptualized it's going to change the entire dynamics of the uh, battle space and also about the air uh, uh, air warfare uh, composite package uh, this th this will actually change your uh, complete packaging so to say of the strikes uh, and um, uh, so uh, that is where the impact of this is going to be and again coming back to whether there will be a doctrinal shift obviously if this is a kind of uh, package uh, packaging system that you are going to have obviously you have to now move from your uh, typical application of air power today to the application of air power that's going to be in uh, future uh, us marine corps uh, is uh, doing that with xq58a which i showed uh, you um, our uh, aircraft development agency ada also plans to use lca navy prototype for uh, similar kind of uh, demonstration and HAL also uh, apparently is uh, under CATS initiative, uh, which is a combat air teaming system, is also exploring these. So this is something which is going to be really, really interesting and how it unfolds in various air forces uh, across the globe is going to uh, make a tremendous, tremendous shift in your um, aerial warfare. Now, other than uh, this, uh, so whether we like it or don't, drones have become an integral part of the warfare and the kind of uses and the kind of innovative uses that we are uh, seeing today uh, will force us to actually uh, involve drone in every facet of war fighting. So these low cost, low tech drones have enabled otherwise inaccessible air power to reach poorer nations and poorer entities. And this is one shift that, that is uh, going. So all those nations, which had not put air power or application of uh, uh, you know, air platforms earlier in their doctrines, now have the ability to be able to, uh, to whatever extent possible, to utilize that uh, air power. And that's, that's why even their uh, ground forces or their uh, security forces are going to make these uh, shifts in their doctrinal uh, concepts. Sustained operations in uh, low intensity conflict. We, we've seen it, uh, you know, in all, all those that I talked about earlier. Um, there's been a sustained operations uh, of the drones in low intensity conflicts and various uh, uses, whether it is for transportation, reconnaissance, logistics, or uh, even, even for the strikes. Um, another important point that's coming towards the doctrinal change is the convergence of internal and external security threats. When we were uh, talking about how when the drones had just about started coming and uh, in fact soon after then we, we had attack in uh, one of our airfields in uh, JNK sector. Um, this was the debate that whose, whose responsibility is to attack to counter the drones. And, um, you know, uh, so there have been a lot of debates uh, between the air forces and the civil agencies that who actually is going to be responsible for um, uh, bringing down the drones or detecting the drones or making the policies uh, against drones. And now, of course, I think that there have been a combined kind of uh, policy uh, that is there to how to um, tackle drones once they are in the civilian areas, how to tackle drones when they are in military areas, when they are in border areas. But all of you are aware that, you know, that there are uh, no fixed uh, borders between uh, internal and external security threats as far as the drones is concerned. Now, the same drone could actually be supplying a uh, drug. We don't know. It is, it is being used in the Punjab uh, sector for supplying drugs and guns and whatnot. 
and the same uh, drone also is uh, being used to attack on our airfield so who tackles that uh, threat so therefore this has become a issue uh, for which the solution needs to be found foolproof solution needs to be found and obviously there has to be much much more coordination between the internal and external uh, security establishment uh, to tackle this threat dependency on uh, ground forces and air forces is likely to reduce for intelligence as well as closer support and even introduction you know we we see uh, the the um, kind of uh, uh, orders that have been placed by uh, the armies all over the world uh, you find that all the roles which uh, traditionally were typically being undertaken by uh, the air forces uh, there quite a few of this actually can be undertaken uh, now uh, by by the ground forces themselves with the help of uh, these uh, drones uh, smaller or the um, uh, you know uh, high level uh, long endurance uh, drones and all these are today today all the armies are equipping themselves with all kinds of these uh, drones which they are going to use in variety of these roles in their contact battles mumt i told you will revolutionize the air strike mission uh, how how we are going to uh, do uh, as and when this uh, comes to that uh, level of application i'm sure this is uh, going to change the air warfare uh, in a big, big manner. Integrated air, land, sea, collaborative missions by drone. I, I covered this. So if if you have these kind of, again, you will have to have those uh, kind of doctrinal shifts in your uh, warfare. Um, now, having uh, talked about what the drones are going to be in, uh, in the military domain, let's have a look at uh, the drone industry of the future. This is, this is uh, one of the uh, um, uh, things from the president's uh, research about how the market is going to grow. This is, uh, this is uh, what they have uh, visualized. Then this is, this is about the anti-drone market because and this is about the anti-drone market and on the similar line the drone market also obviously anti-drone market is uh, increasing in size because the drone uh, nuisance or drone threat uh, has uh, grown multi multifold and therefore there is a big big market for uh, the anti-drone and this is where the industry has to now see obviously drone industry is in both ways uh, in, in a counter drone uh, uh, as well as you uh, know manufacturing of of the drones so this gives us the idea how this is going to shape up the future market engagement of industry by um, uh, armed forces obviously uh, we we have been at it for a very very uh, long time uh, there's uh, there are uh, systems being developed by drdo zaghata rustam tapas Adani Defense and Airspace is in collaboration with Elbit, Hermes 900, and uh, UAV launched PZMs are uh, some of the, the thing on the anvil. Green robotics, I uh, covered AI based, all inclusive uh, in the result solution, which is a wide area uh, solution and uh, well integrated, uh, the thing which is uh, likely to give you uh, entire spectrum solution against uh, the, and this has already been um, demonstrated. Uh, there are close to about 300 startups companies in design and production as on date it could be even you know and more so that gives us the idea of uh, how this market is actually growing and uh, how much is the potential there for the industry in this there are a whole lot of loitering uh, missions that are being uh, developed uh, internally our ecosystem for developing all these uh, systems uh, is there the large number of uh, this, uh, these uh, being developed by our own systems nagastra series uh, by el als 50 by tata advanced system uh, trinetra by uh, z motion other uh, big uh, names that i could just uh, figure, uh, take out the nonstaria paras tatan india info edge uh, you know uh, solar industry dhanuka dcm and there's a whole lot of uh, these new uh, startups and the companies which are now actually uh, um, uh, developing these systems. Um, Air Force, uh, as most of you are aware, uh, we, uh, Air Force had uh, done a Meher Baba Swarm Drone competition in two phases. The latest one, the second phase, uh, of course, was for the Swarm Drone 
uh, which could actually uh, pick up the FOD from our um, uh, runways. Uh, so again, it's a big, uh, uh, the, the phase one also, the, the large number of private operators and the startups were um, uh, actually uh, called up uh, to showcase their capabilities. And it, it actually um, uh, gave a lot of, uh, it generated a lot of uh, uh, competition uh, and a lot of interest in, in all the new startups. Bharat Drone Shakti uh, 2023, recently in September uh, 2023 by IF and DFI. And those of you must have uh, followed uh, in, in Hinden. This was uh, done almost 75 drones uh, were on the static display. For 50 did that aerial display of various companies, including the kamikaze kind of uh, drones uh, that were being developed by our own um, startups and the companies. The large number of orders, like I said earlier, by the armed forces have been given for swarm drones and the space list uh, drones. Uh, Idea Force Swift One, this was uh, the drone which is actually, I think, uh, being used by Army for their high altitude operations. And Netra for internal security, this is also uh, developed by Idea Force. Then a smaller drones with AI with financial capability of most, uh, most of the small companies. So, how it is uh, exciting to the smaller companies primarily because of this that there is a huge role for a smaller drones. Uh, they are smaller, but they are much smarter because of the uses of the AI. And uh, that's why the capability, um, there's a much larger capability that these uh, smaller uh, drones actually have. And more and more um, advancement in their um, uh, processing power will make them that much more smarter. Gen technology uh, anti-drone solution ordered from defense as well as from the other countries. So there's a there's a whole uh, a lot of uh, you know opportunities that our uh, industry has. There are a lot of developments that are uh, happening, whether it is um, in the private sector or the defense PSUs. So there is so much happening. Uh, and uh, all these developments also are banking on the lot of uh, the uh, specific parts uh, that actually can be developed by uh, our large number of MSMEs as well. So uh, to uh, just um, concluding this, I think most of it, uh, then we will discuss um, uh, as, as uh, we proceed with this. But just to conclude, small drones and drone swarms have future. And smaller, the more smaller drones are going to be much, much more smarter, uh, like I said. And um, drone swarms, of course, also uh, is, is going to be uh, the future uh, for military warfare. Military uh, itself is showing a lot of keen interest. Uh, while the drone market was there uh, for the thing, but uh, we must give it to Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine war. Uh, where the drones have actually come to the um, focus. Uh, otherwise, there's so much of interest was not being shown in, in uh, drones. Drones have been there for quite some time, but the interest has, of course, been evolved now. Rapidly evolving field, hence an opportunity to our industry. Counter drone sector is equally attractive, like I uh, brought out. It comprises low tech, low cost, as well as high tech, high cost uh, market. So, in fact, there are there are uh, low tech, low cost. There are medium tech, medium cost, and there are high tech, high cost. And uh, there is a, there is a huge market in each of this uh, segment, and uh, and even the roles. And uh, each of these are actually now um, being evolved in their respective uh, areas of operations. Composite technical system with variety of components, uh, like I said, then a lot of these components uh, can actually be uh, made uh, by the MSMEs. Therefore, it's, it's giving you an environment uh, conducive to the Art Nirvar initiatives of the government. And uh, it has a huge international market. Most of the major defense sector companies are involved in this all over the globe. There is so much uh, is in demand. Um, earlier, uh, in, in, in uh, counterinsurgency uh, uses and insurgency uses, uh, it was being used. But now with the military uses, uh, proper military and warfare uh, uses, this market is going to grow exponentially. 
UAV market size research report of 102 pages by precision report. I just gave this as a the thing because this is one report uh, which I, I took out that chart also from uh, this report. So those of you who are interested can go through. This is the report which talks about the complete market uh, that what is going to happen, how it is going to unfold, where is the where are the opportunities, how we can. Uh, develop what all we can develop and where all uh, the market uh, opportunities are. Uh, so with that, uh, I, I will uh, stop it here, sir, and um, I'll uh, invite questions if any. And uh, I will request there are a whole lot of people here who can answer the question better. In case I am uh, not as equipped to answer the uh, question, I will request the assistance from all my uh, seniors here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Vijayarana. Uh, uh, General Anil Kapoor had raised his hands. He can, we would like to listen to him. OK. General Kapoor, unmute yourself. Sir, uh, firstly, uh, a brilliant presentation, sir. Thank you so much. It was very nice to listen to the various views. I'm sorry, actually, uh, there's a little uh, problem I was having with my mobile because of which I was pressing it time and again, but that uh, opportunity is being given. Uh, I'd like to say that <clears throat> drones perhaps is brought to the fore the dual use it has, which has been very vividly brought out by Air Marshal. Uh, now, uh, if we were to look at the whole continuum today, right from the low Earth orbit, uh, we've got these pseudo satellites which are actually drones right through till underwater i think they are the ones uh, which are disrupting not only warfare they are also disrupting life in the cv street in fact in the us they are looking at other than gps a, a swarm of drones along with the terrestrial system which will ensure a resilient pnt i'm sure the uh, gathering is aware that uh, time and again there have been threats to the airfields in US based on the PNT problems, wherein the GPS system is being uh, <clears throat> affected by cyber threats. And therefore, to get an assured PNT, they are looking at now uh, deploying drones and a terrestrial system uh, to look at the whole aspect of ensuring that the position, navigation, and timing of the GPS has a uh, residual layer. So technologies are being developed around this uh, because the, the brilliance of uh, uh, the unmanned autonomous system lies in the variety of payloads that one can carry and the endurance. Uh, today, uh, I'm aware of China. They've developed a pseudo drone, uh, which they're calling it a quasi satellite, uh, which can stay uh, in the uh, low earth orbit or somewhere there for 90 days. Yes. That means you can position fix it for 90 days and then replace it based on solar panels. So uh, I think this is where uh, the next uh, uh, big disruption will come after the digital disruption. Uh, now uh, we're going to have a huge amount of drones given the variety of applications. And uh, the last point I'd like to mention is that Actually, uh, when we've been doing discussions, uh, especially in the defense forces, uh, we look at saturation raids, we look at recce in force, we look at combat air patrols, we look at pilot to aircraft ratios in war. I think all these will get redefined and re-evaluated given the fact that unmanned autonomous systems have now come in. So uh, that is going to be uh, the new revolution that we'll have in military affairs and new disruption in military affairs. And uh, I think what you brought out about Russia-Ukraine war and, of course, the Aramco incident uh, brilliantly tells us, and in fact, even the Azerbaijan-Armenia war uh, tells us how unsymmetric uh, this can become in favor of the one who uses it most imaginatively. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was very nice listening to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can we have uh, General Krishnan to say a few words before? 
don't we have some more time for any questions if there are yeah. Sandeep? yes there are, there are questions uh, there are people who have raised their hands i think uh, uh, I, I, what I can... we can do is we can just take on some questions uh, maybe if yeah. there are okay, okay. Uh, RK and, then, and, and then finally maybe i can I, i'll just uh, thank we, um, you know marshal rana and say a few words yeah okay uh, are you taking sir uh, brigadier sandeep sir yeah there is a question from you also not from me not from me uh, mr narang uh, so may uh, sir i am retired group captain narang uh, you uh, initially we spoke about self reliance so uh, in india uh, self reliance also has a civil component so drone technology when you look at global development uh, technology development is also uh, simultaneously steered by federal aviation uh, administration of usa or easa of europe uh, but we do not have such uh, technology development in the drone sector in the civil sector let's say we have idex initiative in defense but corresponding initiative in civil technology is not there so how do we address the problem of civil military integration and leveraging those technology to strengthen the defense uh, drone technology development thank you yeah in fact um, i think somebody else uh, will also be able to uh, throw light on this more but um, what i know is that this is actually a challenge that is being faced uh in in uh, the uses of uh, particularly the commercial uses of um, the drones since there are no regulatory uh, mechanism in between there was a regulation but that regulation just came harsh that no use of drones now that is no kind of a regulation uh, then uh, government realized that then uh, because since the drone application is there for the civilian users as well so you can't really uh, stop so then uh, there is something on um, uh, dgca uh, side uh, which is supposed to be the clearances to be uh, taken so they have come out with uh, so, so each each uh, operator actually is supposed to apply for uh, things so that's those are the kind of you know the regulations that are happening but uh, more serious question uh, narang is going to be uh, on the loitering munition uh, because there has been uh, no um, uh ethical so to say uh, and and i'm i'm talking about that there's a combined regulatory body that has to happen because uh, it is not only that uh, um, uh, uses of you know, these drones in the civilian this thing needs to be regulated even the war time uh, this thing needs to be regulated and there's been a lot of concern shown on uh, the ai enabled uh, smart uh, loitering munitions that they uh, their kind of collaterals that are going to be created though do you really want to have those kind of weapon system to take on the entire battle space tomorrow uh, so it is it is kind of a, like a you know robotic war that is uh, going to happen so are we ready for the kind of robotic war uh, in future where there is no concern for the human angle uh and it is bound to happen you know the one if you are going to outsmart your enemy you are going to do a better uses of whatever the technology you have and therefore uh, there is now a raising concern um uh, coming up uh, that how this regulation uh, of the application of loitering munition uh, should be done Uh, as far as uh, your uh, concern on uh, regulation of uh, the development and um, usage of the drone on the civilian uh, the things concerned of of, uh, of of course that that is something uh, is that needs to be uh, done and uh, i in our uh, parlance i think only as of now only dgca is the one which is uh, putting a clamp on the uses part of it not the not on the developmental uh, part of it so there is no technological uh, this thing as of now but your uh, this concern is certainly uh, needs to be uh, you know taken into account and we we should have uh, that kind of regulatory mechanism on board thank you uh, any more are there any more questions or do we have time uh, i yeah, think uh, uh, general kapoor had raised his hand, hand. and he can actually uh, throw some light on this because right. <clears throat> uh okay uh, i am jal kapoor now uh, two things i want to bring out here one is 
that DGC along with Ministry of Civil Aviation actually has come up with a very interesting drone rule book 2021. Yeah. And uh, they've defined uh, red zones, green zones and amber zones, uh, which will be uh, earmarked and uh, based on geospatial data. In fact, there is a lot of work afoot now to define these zones so that uh, the cargo unmanned autonomous systems can deploy. Uh, the other is that a lot of air ambulance systems, which are again based on unmanned systems, are uh, taking shape. In fact, I'm aware of two of them in Hyderabad, uh, which have come up. Uh, a large number of, uh, uh, Air Marshal brought out a large number of uh, uh, small scale MSMEs, which are coming up for making components. A large number of startups and a large number of MSMEs are actually today getting into drones of various sizes. In fact, we have, uh, uh, recently I came across uh, IIT Kanpur startup called Endure Air, which is coming up in a big way. They've made a mini Chinook. They've made a mini helicopter. They made a micro and a nano drone like uh, we've got Black Hornet uh, for various purposes. And uh, uh, today we've got uh, uh, already up to 50 kg payload that they can carry in high altitude area. So, I mean, that is the kind of uh, capabilities that have already been built in. And uh, work is afoot to take it to uh, 100 kgs payload carrying capacity with an endurance of almost six hours. And I'm talking of high altitude area. So that is the kind of value add that is happening. And if it can happen in high altitude, you can imagine that uh, in the CV street, I mean, all Amazons will uh, actually revert to uh, carriage by drones because it's going to be fairly cost effective. And uh, a, a lot of these... Uh, in fact, uh, today, uh, Ministry of Civil Aviation is working out uh, a large number of uh, helipads and other such infrastructure that needs to come up uh, when we are looking at these green zones. So, so that is also uh, something that is being done on ground. Uh, th the last thing I want to mention is that, uh, you know, it's very interesting. In 2020, the study said that the market uh, for drones, which India could actually provide to the world, was 3,000 crores. A recent study talks of 75,000 crores by 2025. Yes. And 2.5 lakh crores by 2030. Out of which 50% will be for security and uh, uh, homeland security and of course all security purposes. Almost 25% uh, will be for logistics. And 25% will be for other usage. So that is the kind of uh, 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 future that uh, drone industry has and uh, I'm aware, uh, since I'm staying in Noida, large, it's, it's becoming a drone hub of India. A lot of startups are coming up there. So uh, there is a lot of reverberation. Almost all IITs today yeah. are into drones, uh, supporting drones and drone manufacturing, brushless motors, components. So uh, actually, uh, I would say that uh, there is a huge, huge future in India. And India is going to drive uh, drones uh, globally. I know... Uh, Turkey's come up, Iran has come up, uh, recent past. But I think day is not far when India will be calling the shots in this. Thank you. Uh, so on this, just I just wanted to add, uh, you know, when uh, yeah. I wanted to add uh, that uh, what the rule book that we are talking about, we, we actually deliberated it for a very, very long time between uh, the DGCA and the IAF uh, and uh, um, uh, Home Ministry uh, for because it, was, it had the issues with the internal security. It had issues with the aviation and it had issued uh, issues with the uh, air defense for which air force is primarily responsible so it it, it was a quite a complicated uh, thing and it's at the end of it uh, something which has come out in the form of narang uh, gave that about the digital sky uh, the link that is given so some sort of a regulation has been uh, put on uh, put in place uh, there is, but i i am aware because we were involved in that initial this thing it is not foolproof yeah. There's a whole lot of issues in uh, this, uh, and this would need a refinement as we proceed and as we see more and more of these uses uh, proliferating. Uh, this certainly there is a scope for revisiting it, uh, you know, regularly. Thank Absolutely. you. Just wanted. Absolutely. Okay, let's have let's have uh, because Ajarvedi is speaking. I, in the meantime, I'll request also uh, the Jansi and Babina team uh, to. Have some their views, uh, uh, you know, 
as a user viewpoint, as a user viewpoint, we'll request you to kindly put across your points. Over to Vikas. Yeah, I'll just make a very quick point. We're running out of time. One is the fact that a lot of uh, strategic pundits were proved wrong because of the long and protracted war between Russia and Ukraine. Practically everybody who said this is how it's going to pan out, it did not pan out like that. And we are going back to World War One day, one time. And we know no one knows till now why Russian Air Force failed so miserably. Ultimately, they are being helped by a country like Iran for the drones. So this is something which we need to keep in mind when our we are looking at our LCA itself. We are talking about our own real-time situation over here and how drones are going to be used here extensively. Then we also heard of underslung terrorists on the drones being dropped in. I saw some videos there which are being demonstrated that you can even have insertion of terrorists through an underslung load of human beings. Second thing, it's the last thing uh, is the uh, democratization of aerospace war. This is going to be a very, uh, you know, very mind boggling thing. We are looked at Starlink now of Musk, which was provided to Ukraine and now he's going to provide it to Israel because he made an anti-Semitic statement. He's trying to patch up with them, funnily enough. What we are trying to say is that, OK, we are looking at uh, India supplying the drones to the entire world, but there will be non-state actors within India itself who can be inimical to India, who can be producing very small drones secretively and acting against us. This is something which we'll have to look at it in a very big way. And lastly, about the sociology of war, job creation, and wealth generation is going to be fantastic with the drones. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> yeah, can can we have the Jansi team and the Babina team? Jain sir, uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes please. Put on your video, sir. So, uh, Jain sir, I am Colonel Abhinav, uh, CO31 Armored District Regiment, sir. Uh, well, we don't have any questions. Uh, however, I would like to compliment the speaker for a very well delivered lecture, sir. Uh, we all understand the complexities of the latest battlefield. And while we get into a lot of training events, uh, we do understand that drones need to get integrated into the overall uh, uh, TTPs that are being followed. Uh, we do have a lot of companies, as you were suggesting, which are coming in into our uh, uh, locations for various trials uh, uh, and we this is a very very relevant topic sir and uh, we while we understand the importance uh, seeing uh, the war starting from uh, Armenia Ukraine and now in Israel that uh, drones have become the mainstay of uh, the forces and the way it is affecting so uh, yes sir we do understand and uh, I would like to extend a, a thanks and compliments to the speaker uh, for the well delivered lecture once again sir thank you sir thank you very much and uh, uh, who else is there uh, sir, raising hands senjos uh, group captain amitabh mathur of senjos is there uh, yeah any points from senjos please senjos group captain mathur sir my compliments to the speaker He's, your he video please audience. group captain Sir, I'm, um, I'm in the, uh, not fully prepared. Uh, it has been a very good lecture in this, uh, almost all the parts of drones and counter drone technology, which is happening in, in this domain has been covered very well by the speaker. I, my compliments to him, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I, I think, can uh, we, uh, can uh, we uh, have, Krishnan can and we have? Sir, I send a message. So yeah, okay. now okay. Uh, we are running out of time and we, okay not take more questions now so i will request general Krishna right. to give his review please. okay okay uh thank you very much Machal rana for that uh wonderful talk i think you've covered everything that was required to be covered and that could have been covered within the time um as you yourself mentioned you know one could have spoken on the subject and continued to speak for maybe hours on together but uh it, it was very wonderfully covered uh thank you very much uh, you've given us an excellent glimpse of the future and, you know, highlighted by saying smaller, smarter ones are going to be there. And it's very, very pleasing to note that uh, the Indian uh, defense industry field, uh, at least the drone vertical is going, getting crowded and crowded. Uh, that's a very pleasing thing to note. Uh, also, I think, you know, um, amongst with all this happening around, 
this uh, the drone dimension is going to enable uh, the combat potential of air power to be far better integrated with the other dimensions of power whether it is land or sea than it had ever been so that again uh, would be something very uh, you know which will have a lot of uh, uh, unrolling of uh, the different avenues as we go ahead and uh, also because of its extensive uh, use in civil you know the that is a great advantage to the industry because otherwise the industry is always caught up uh, typically because uh, i am very closely associated with defense industries uh, you know when it comes to arms equipment and specific to defense equipment uh, they want some order to produce now nobody can give them an order to start an industry so it's a it's a typical cash 22 situation but fortunately for drones it isn't there because of the extensive use that the civil uh, you know whether it is the, the commercial use that it has uh, so all that it uh, remains for me is to thank you once again thank you very much and thank you uh, sandeep uh, and uh, raj uh, thanks uh, iir for holding such a wonderful session we can close i think thank you thank you thank you very much sir marshal rana brigadier sandeep sir you will like to say some last word yeah uh, it was a great talk and uh, very uh, uh, you know a lot of things a lot of new things probably people would know had come up and uh, uh, the future the, the history and the future of drones and uav is one of the aspect which is well covered and all the industrialists here should note that you know this is going to be the next thing uh, for them to uh, uh, try and get it like he said it is going to be the you know uh, air force for the uh, countries who cannot afford a standing air force and things like that and uav and the spare parts are going to be the future in the warfare in across the world this is going to be the thing and and that is where the our uh, industrialists and entrepreneurs and all here should take a key out of that and uh, uh, take it further uh, developing in india is an important aspect and it is going to come up because we have you know we are, like last time i had not uh, put across the research uh, researchers have said India is the you know one of the third three countries where disruptive technology uh, uh, is being developed in in a, in a good way, not in a disruptive uh, way, but in a creative way. So this has to be uh, taken ahead. And we uh, finally, uh, I thank uh, uh, Air Marshal Vijay Rana and all the uh, for a lovely for a very a very very uh, interesting talk. And uh, which is, which I'm sure will, you know, make people think and uh, go ahead with their own and, uh, you know, various things, what exactly they have to do. And thanks all uh, uh, for attending it. And Anil Kosla, sir, do you have anything to say? You can say, otherwise we'll uh, call it close, sir. Kosla, sir, has messaged. Thank you. Yeah, I, I saw the message. Yeah. Hello. Okay, fine, fine, excellent. That's absolutely okay. Mike is not working. He has passed a message. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for attending this. And uh, our next uh, talk will be soon. It will be soon there, and we will keep you informed. And I would request everybody to uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, put your comments in the uh, comments so that we can further improve ourselves. Thank you very much.